the, the purpose of this uh, presentation is to offer an analysis of the recent developments concerning Turkish foreign policy with a view to encouraging rather your comments than your questions. Your interpretation of the moves of the Turkish diplomacy will be of value to all of us and will certainly help us to a better understanding of the situation. I tend to refer to the new strategy of Turkey, to some of the changes that have occurred affecting the Cyprus problem, and the positive and negative aspects of this strategy before reaching my conclusions. It is generally accepted that the appointment of Ahmed Davutoglu to the foreign ministry has greatly contributed to the rise of Turkey. The new strategy of Turkey is based on the theory of strategic depth and neo-Ottomanism of Ahmed Davutoglu. Through his Ottoman lessons, Davutoglu sees Turkey as being at the same time Middle East and Caucasus, Europe and Asia, Black Sea and Mediterranean. Let's see how this is implemented in practice. The end of the Cold War and the fall of the Soviet Union created new opportunities for Turkey to expand its zone of influence in the Turkish-speaking countries of Central Asia and the Caucasus. The excuse was at the time to bar Iranian influence. American funds were given to Turkey to develop uh, TV programs and uh, books for that purpose. With Russia, Turkey played the economic card. The volume of their bilateral trade is 40 billion US dollars. With Turkey importing 65% of its natural gas and 40% of its oil from Russia. With Bulgaria, their relations are normalized since the Turkish minority of Bulgaria is represented by the country's coalition government. Coming now to the Balkans, <coughs> which represents a stepping stone for Europe, Turkey established her position by participating in peacekeeping operations of the United Nations, NATO and the EU in Kosovo, Bosnia-Herzegovina and the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. They invest in various projects and of course they support the Muslims of these countries. Where <coughs> we have big changes is in the Middle East. And at first, Israel. We know what happened in Davos when uh, Prime Minister Erdogan attacked the Israelis for the bombardment of Gaza <coughs> in front of Shimon Peres. We know that <coughs> Erdogan received the leader of Hamas. And of course, uh, there are several other events which we should mention. The fact that uh, uh, Turkey cancelled military exercises uh, with Israel in accordance with the Treaty of Military Cooperation of 1996. And instead, they had common exercises with Syria. Ten years ago, they were ready to go to war because, as you know, Syria was supporting the PKK. We have the recent developments of the bloc uh, 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 concerning the blockade of Gaza. And of course, even yesterday, they did not allow a military aircraft of uh, Israel to uh, pass via the airspace of Turkey carrying soldiers. And Erdogan says this, is, this will be continued in the future too. This is another escalation. Uh, <coughs> they had visits to Iraq, where they were speaking to the Kurds and Iran, where uh, President Gül was uh, uh, received at the highest level by Ayatollah Khomeini, uh, Khamenei, Khamenei, who Gül, the leader of a uh, NATO country and a light of the United States. Turkey has openly chosen, from what we've said, the Arab camp. I should mention here the fact that even when Rasmussen was supposed to be elected as uh, Secretary General of NATO, Turkey uh, created some problems at the beginning, saying that uh, he comes from a country which attacked uh, Muslims by having these pictures published in the newspapers, 
for the Prophet Muhammad. In general, through a multidimensional foreign policy, Turkey managed to project the image of a strong regional power. They participate in peacekeeping operations all over the world. They promote economic cooperation with various countries, especially in the Caribbean and Latin America. They are the sixth uh, economic power in Europe and the 17th in the world. Hence, they participate in the G20 group. They effectuate high-level visits and they have done so in more than 60 countries in order to promote their interests at the international level. Without producing a drop of petrol or natural gas, they are energy players. East and West need Turkey as a transit country, as it is shown by the Nabucco and South Stream projects. As a result of all these efforts, she was elected as a non-permanent member of the Security Council, gaining additional margin of diplomatic maneuvering. You are aware of the recent effort Turkey made to table a draft resolution on the basis of the UK draft during the discussion of the renewal of ANFISIP. Having such capital at his disposal, Prime Minister Erdogan visited President Obama last December, reciprocating Obama's April 2009 visit to Turkey. Allow me to open a parenthesis here and make a reference to the U.S.-Turkey relations. President Obama had a stepfather from Indonesia who was a Muslim, and he spent some time there. He lived in Indonesia, and he was influenced by the Muslim faith. He had an American mother. So in his mind, uh, there was a mixture of uh, democratic values from his American mother and the Muslim faith from his stepfather. So in his mind, the conclusion was that Turkey was the model to be projected. We should not forget that Obama's first visit overseas after his election was to Turkey and that he described U.S.-Turkey's relations as, I quote, a model partnership, unquote, and asked the Europeans in Prague to accept Turkey in the European Union. On the basis of the above, we observe the importance of Turkey for the United States and NATO. We observe also that there is a support of the European perspective of Turkey, which serves American interests. And the question is why? Well, as you know, <coughs> in the European Parliament, they have their cousins, the British, ready to support them. They have the representatives of the uh, former communist countries of Eastern Europe, Poland, the Czech Republic, Hungary. These people do not have anymore the security umbrella of the Warsaw Pact, and they don't trust the Germans and the French, so they look towards the Americans, and they really there are some occasional, as I call them, allies, like Aznar in Spain or Berlusconi in Italy. So, imagine now having about 90 or more European parliamentarians from Turkey, more than the Germans. This is a means of controlling the Euro Parliament, and of course we know that they have differences uh, with the European Union. Also, <clears throat> we should not forget that uh, the strategic importance for the United States of the Muslim world, because, as you know, terrorism emanates from there. Coming back to the visit of the Turkish Prime Minister to Washington, we should mention that they discussed various issues of common interest. But what is remarkable is to note that on four issues, of capital importance to the U.S. Erdogan said no. On the question of Afghanistan, they were asked to send more troops as other NATO members did. The answer of Erdogan was that I will not send Muslims to kill Muslims. On the question of Iran, they were asked 
<coughs> to apply more stricter sanctions. Erdogan's they are not effective in actual fact. When the draft resolution was discussed in the Security Council to apply uh, stricter sanctions against Iran, Turkey voted against, against it, and of course that was backed by, by Washington. Uh, on the question of Armenia, as you know, a protocol has been signed to normalize the uh, relations between the two countries, uh, open the borders, and establish diplomatic relations. So the Americans wanted to expedite that. The answer of, uh, of Erdogan was that there is a condition. Armenia should withdraw from Nagorno-Karabakh. And of course, a negative answer was given uh, on the question of Israel when the Americans asked them to mend fences with that country. We observe that Turkey is making an effort of disengagement from the United States through differentiation of her policies on many international issues. Erdogan said it clearly, we look towards the West without neglecting the, West, the East. Let us come now to some changes that have occurred as a result of Turkish efforts, which also affect the Cyprus problem. The Organization of Islamic Conference. In the past, this organization had a procipiate stand which was due to the following factors. The Arabs under the Ottoman Empire suffered economic, political, racial, and linguistic oppression. Cessation of minorities represent a menace to certain Arab countries. Turkey was a member of NATO and US ally, something which provokes the sentiments of certain hardline Arabs like Gaddafi, that was in the past. Turkey was the first Muslim country to recognize Israel. All these factors certainly created a negative climate for Turkey. The friendly feelings of the Arab world were confirmed after the invasion of Cyprus by Turkey in 1974. Makarios visited Sadat of Egypt, Boumedien of Algeria, and Tito of Yugoslavia to ask for help. The non-aligned movement created the contact group and the resolution 3212 of the General Assembly of December 1974 was passed uh, because of the support of the non-aligned and the draft was presented by them. Failure of Turkey to associate herself with the, the non-aligned movement in whatever form, at one stage they tried to enter a small committee but there was a reaction and they were not accepted. Uh, Led, led her to the organization of Islamic Conference in order to promote her interest. Working methodically after the legal declaration of the TRNC and upgrading her uh, participation in the work of the organization, Turkey managed gradually to have her position on the Cyprus problem accepted in the text of the organization using the Islamic card. George was there when we went in 1984 in January to an Islamic summit in uh, Rabat, in Morocco. And there, for the first time, Turkey sent General Efren, the head of state, to participate. It was two months after the illegal UDI. Until that time, they were sending either a foreign minister or an ambassador. But on that occasion, and from that occasion on, they are represented at the highest level. So, <coughs> uh, at the beginning, in the text of the Islamic organization, we had references uh, which were made to the full equality of the two sides in Cyprus, the right of the Turkish Cypriot to be heard and represented at all international fora, etc. After the referenda on the Enan plan in 2004, Turkey exploited the negative climate affecting our side and managed to pass more advanced positions. She interpreted the separate referenda as underlying the existence of, existence of two states. In the text, there was an appeal to end the so-called isolation, a call for effective, effective solidarity with the Turkish Cypriots. Even the question of upgrading the Turkish Muslim people of Cyprus as they are registered in the OIC, from observer to full member, 
that was presented as being made by the Turkish Cypriot side of Cyprus. Most important, it was decided that the Turkish Muslim people of Cyprus should continue to participate in the work of the OIC with the name provided for in the Annan plan. It is obvious that they wanted to conceal the reference to the Turkish Cypriot constituent state. Last but not least, Turkey managed to have elected a Secretary General of the OIC, a Turk, Mr. Iksanoglu. In general, the climate in the Arab world has changed in favor of Turkey, whose arguments are now more persuasive. It seems that economic and other interests are influencing traditional friends of Cyprus. A good example is Syria, which allowed the maritime connection of Latakia with the illegal port of Amagusta, when Cyprus is voting in favor of the Arab positions concerning the Golan Heights. And a more recent one, the Lebanon presented amendments in favor of Turkey to the resolution of the Security Council concerning the renewal of Anfisi. In the past, the European Court of Human Rights was doing justice to Cyprus to our, to our cause. Good example, the Loisido case. Recently, things have changed. Political and certainly not legal considerations produced the decision recognizing the so-called Immovable Property Commission, the IPC, as a means of exhaustion of local remedies. Within the framework of the Council of Europe, we should also mention the election of a Turk to the presidency of the Consultative Assembly. Yet another point for Turkey. In the United Nations, efforts are being made to use the renewal of Amphisip as a means of exercising, exercising pressure on our side. We have already referred to the recent Security Council resolution and the tabling of a Turkish draft. Who, however, forgets the mid-2009 unprecedented efforts in the Security Council to raise questions about the future of Anfisip aiming at the revision of its mandate? The warning showed how the climate is changing and at the same time reflected a broader international impatience with the continuation of one of the UN's longest-running peacekeeping operations. On the basis of the developments which we have mentioned, we observe that the new Turkish strategy has positive and negative aspects. By being stronger and more, and more prosperous, today's Turkey is more inclined than in the past to define the European Union. We have already referred to Turkey's negative stance on American demands. EU members are openly asked now by Turkey to choose between the 750,000 Greek Cypriots and the commercial and strategic opportunities in Turkey, a country of 75 million. Knowing that France and Germany, among other countries, are against their accession to the EU, Turkey is demotivated by the sense that whatever she does, she will not be accepted by Europe and that ever, that even if she helps solve the Cyprus problem, core EU states would find another issue to block accession. Why then make concessions on Cyprus? By playing the Arab card in the Middle East, Turkey is presenting herself as the big Islamic power which can create problems to Israel more effectively than Iran, that she is not calculating political costs and alliances if it is to expose Israel. The other side of the coin has negative connotations. Turkey's stance is embarrassing some similarly US-allied Arab states such as Egypt and Saudi Arabia, which have shied away from confronting Israel despite popular demands to do so. By projecting herself as the champion of the Muslims of the region and providing a fresh path for Arabs, one might expect a strong reaction of these countries in the future. On the other hand, the advantage that Turkey had to bring together people like Hamas and Israel is definitely gone. The region has lost its mediator. It is common knowledge 
that after the recent killing by Israeli forces of nine Turkish activists on board a ship that tried to run the Israeli blockade of Gaza, the relations between the two countries have hit rock bottom. As it was expected, the reaction of the Jewish lobby in the United States was furious. U.S. lawmakers warned Turkey that her ties with Washington would suffer if she continued to follow an anti-Israeli path. At a news conference, Republicans and Democrats denounced Turkey for supporting the activists. Moreover, the lawmakers criticized Turkish opposition to a recent UN Security Council resolution extending punitive sanctions on Iran for its nuclear program, which were strongly backed by Washington. As for the cost Turkey might pay for its stance, Mike Pence, the number three Republican in the U.S. House of Representatives, said he was ready to reevaluate his past reluctance to support a congressional resolution denouncing as genocide the World One era killings of Armenians by Ottoman forces. It seems that lawmakers in the United States are gradually getting aware of the hypocritical stance of Turkey. On the one hand, she projects herself as an anti-occupation power, denouncing, denouncing the occupation of Palestine, and on the other, she occupies illegally the northern part of Cyprus and refuses to recognize the genocide of the Armenians. From the picture, which I have adumbrated, we conclude that the rise of Turkey within the regional and international framework is a reality. There are certainly weaknesses in her neo-Ottoman policies, which Cyprus should exploit, in particular the expected reactions of the Jewish lobby and some core Arab countries. Moreover, there is an ongoing conflict between the deep state, the secular Kemalist establishment and the AKP, the Islamist party of Tayyip Erdogan. We don't know which of them will have the upper hand at the end. In this respect, we should not forget the wrong calculations of the West in Iran at the time of the Shah brought to power Ayatollah Khomeini. Concluding, I feel that on the question of Cyprus, Turkey would never give in to pressures. This is a pessimistic conclusion, but as you know, a pessimist is an optimist well informed. Thank you.